Okay, John, we're in the heart of Mayfair, the most expensive place on the Monopoly board. People are living pretty well here. This is a place where your city slickers are, your hedge funders, your equity firms, your CEOs of big corporations. But not everybody is living like this, are they? Contrast Mayfair with the people at the other end of the Monopoly board. Their livelihoods have been affected by government cuts, cutbacks to education services, health services. And at the heart of Mayfair, you have these really wealthy people who pay no taxes, or very low taxes indeed, because they've been given so many tax cuts. And we have to ask, who benefits from the tax cuts? We were here in the 1980s. The big idea here is cut taxes for the rich and cut taxes for the big companies, and they'll invest more in jobs. And because of the growth that investment will yield, you'll have more government revenue to pay for. And that's a very seductive argument. You see politicians across the board thinking, that's great. The trouble is, it never happened. It didn't happen in the 1980s, and it's not going to happen now. So what does investment actually mean? What's good investment, and what's the kind of investment that we don't want? Britain has one of the worst productivity rates in Western Europe because for a very long time we quite simply haven't been investing in training our workforce, in research and development in new products and new services. Too much of it is going into mergers and acquisitions. The City of London really specialises in mergers and acquisitions. Now what that means is in buying up existing companies and merging them with other companies or in acquiring companies in order to create monopolies. Either way, it leads to monopoly situations. If you look at the high street, you see all the small shops that used to proliferate on the high streets have largely gone. They've all been merged into these gigantic global chains because they have monopolies in their areas. They're able to raise prices. It's certainly affected ordinary working people, but rich people get much higher profits. And that's why the house prices in Mayfair are so extortionate. A lot of the investment also goes into speculative trading, pushing up real estate prices and pricing residential property out of the market for most young people in Britain. Around Brexit, we've had a lot of speculative activity on currency of sterling, and that's been very harmful. People have been making fortunes. The good investment, of course, is the kind of investment we want which is going to create good jobs, productive jobs, invest in training, investing in new products and so on. Um, that kind of investment is harder to attract because it needs a really strong government investment in infrastructure, in training, in education, in research and development, and that requires high taxes. So these tax cuts is all part of a race to the bottom between nations. At the heart of the political argument is this idea that nations need to compete to attract investment. And that's nonsense, because the nation... It should be companies that compete, not nations. That's exactly it. It's companies that should be competing, and that should be bringing prices down. This race to the bottom is having a dramatic effect on the way that democracy works. Because essentially what their politicians are saying is, we can't do what the people actually want us to do, because investors won't come to this country unless we give them the tax cuts and cut the social protections, and cut worker protections and cut environmental protections. We're going towards a situation where countries are not even attempting to cooperate with one another on things like information exchange between tax authorities to stop the big companies from evading and avoiding tax, uh, in, in terms of better regulation to stop companies from completely wrecking our environment. For many years around the world I've been hearing that Ireland is the case study which proves that tax competition works and that governments must lower taxes for the rich and for the big powerful companies. The real story is when they joined the European Economic Community in the 1970s, they became one of the biggest receivers of subsidies from the European Union. Development funding, social funding, all this money flowing into the Irish economy, not least from the common agricultural policy. And that stimulated their economy in a massive way. It wasn't the tax 
rates or tax cuts. It was just the cherry on the cake for those big investors. And the thing is, we're all paying for these cuts. Since the 1980s, the rich have had their taxes cut, progressive income tax, corporate income tax, inheritance tax. What's gone up is value-added tax, which was initially introduced at a rate of 7.5%. Now it's 20%. Now that affects every single household in Britain. So they give tax cuts to the rich, richest people. At the same time, they've been raising taxes on the lowest income households. So how should taxes actually work in the public interest? We live in a capitalist society where wealth and income are extremely badly distributed between the people who own capital and the people who actually work and create value. Taxes play a part in redistributing this wealth and income and if you don't use it to redistribute then you end up with these horribly unequal societies that we're living in today. And when rich people and the powerful companies choose to use tax havens so they're not contributing to our society, they're making their money but they're not contributing to the health services, the education services, to the roads, to the justice system. When we leave the EU, we'll be able to allow UK businesses to, uh, and manufacturers uh, to have bigger tax breaks for the investments they make in capital and new technology. So Prime Minister Johnson has all kinds of plans for Britain after Brexit. The vision they have is to make Britain even more of a tax haven than it is already. And remember, Britain has this whole cluster of tax havens. It's not just London, and that's at the heart of the city's model. They won't, for example, be cooperating with the European Union's anti-tax avoidance directive. They will be cutting social protections, environmental protections, workers' rights, and so on. And as Britain becomes more of a tax haven, the people who benefit will be the very richest people. Here we are. It will be the Mayfair crowd who will benefit. I think virtually everyone else in Britain will lose out as a result of this move towards making Britain even more of a tax haven than it is already. Kansas is perhaps one of the most notorious examples of this. Back in 2012, they went full on cutting taxes for the rich, saying this will lead to more investment, more jobs. Their revenues collapsed. They had to cut back on education services, on health services. The economy was collapsing. It affected business startups. Most of their skilled professional people simply left Kansas as a result of this. It was a disaster for the entire economy. This is capitalism at its most crazy. This is where capitalism has transformed itself as a result of this race to the bottom into a corporate welfare state. And the beneficiaries of the corporate welfare state are the richest companies and the richest investors in the world. So Amazon is the richest company in the world. They started off a big competition between different states in the United States to bid to be the lucky one to host their second headquarters. States which have absolutely no money to spare whatsoever because of tax cuts and the need to maintain their welfare state started to bid billions of dollars to attract Amazon's headquarters. We'll take $10 billion in tax burdens and shift them off you onto our local businesses and residents. $15 billion in refundable tax credits. $20 billion in direct kickbacks. $30 billion in unmarked non-sequential bills. $50 billion taxpayer dollars in an untraceable overseas account. That's yours for the taking. We're no longer supporting and providing for the most vulnerable people in the world. We're supporting and providing for the richest people in the world. And another really interesting case of that is the Walton family who own Walmart. And of course, they are the biggest welfare recipients in the world because they pay their workers in the United States such low wages that most of them have to live on housing benefits. As a result of this political failure to address the race to the bottom, small companies being driven out of business, they can't use tax havens, they don't get the big subsidies, they don't get the, the states piling out piling one on top of one another to outbid them to attract small businesses. Um, they're being squeezed out. The big businesses are reinforcing their monopoly positions. Everybody is worse off. Everybody's worse off apart from the very richest people on the planet.
So instead of cutting taxes, what should our politicians be doing instead? Well, it's, it's a simple choice. You can choose to engage in the race to the bottom, turn us into tax haven Britain, or you could say, right, we're going to cooperate with other countries, we're going to tackle tax avoidance, we're going to raise our corporate income tax rates to a more sensible level. It's far too low now, 25%, maybe even higher. We're going to introduce wealth taxes, we're going to have a financial transaction taxes. In other words, on the tax side, there's lots that can be done, um, uh, which would raise more revenue and help to start the process of redistributing income and wealth in a country which has reached almost record levels of inequality when you look back over the last 100 years. On the regulation side, I don't think it makes any sense to deregulate our capital markets. They're already very poorly regulated. We could strengthen the regulation there. We could ensure more compliance by the bankers with anti-money laundering regulations. We could do so much more to improve consumer protections, to, to improve environmental protections. If countries really want to engage in competitions, let's have a race to the top not a race to the bottom. Why not have the best public transport infrastructure in the world? Why not have the best education system in the world? The best health services in the world? Much better pensions to look after our elderly people. Accelerate the transition towards a fossil fuel free economy. In other words, why don't we dream a bit about the possible fantastic things that could be done rather than tax cuts for the rich I've so far preferred to see Britain actually raise its heads a bit higher and go for a race to the top.